Hi everyone, welcome to Mechanical Diary. From this channel, I am going to share my all experience with you. If you like this video, just subscribe and share with your friends. In this video, I am going to explain about floating head exchanger. Floating head exchanger is a, one of the most important exchanger in refinery. I hope end of this video you will know about floating head exchanger. First we will start from exchanger internal parts. Each and every exchanger have a separate separate internal parts. So now in this video I am going to explain about floating head exchanger internal parts. First part is a shell, second one is a tube bundle, channel cut, channel cover. Floating head exchanger tube bundles always have a two tube sheet. Front side is a stationary tube sheet and back side is a floating tube sheet. Then split ring and floating head and exchanger pack cover. It's called shell pack cover. Next one more important part is called impingement plate. This plate always to placed on the cell side inlet nozzle. Because the inlet pressure it will not affect the tube bundle directly. That's why it is placed on the cell side nozzle area. Next channel head partition plate. Partition plate used for divert the flow to one end to another end. Then tube side inlet nozzle and a tube side outlet nozzle, cell side inlet nozzle and cell side outlet nozzle. These are all the parts for floating it exchangers. Next you can see one small video of tube bundle assembling. Tube bundle assembling first part is a stationary tube sheet, then tie rods, then buffle plate. Buffle plate gave many types in refinery. So please continue watch my channel, you will get more knowledge about mechanical maintenance activities in refinery. Second tube sheet is a floating head tube sheet. Once we assembled both tube sheet, tie rods and buffle plate, then directly we can start the inserting of tubes. Inserting tube sheet also have some patterns. There is a three types of pattern is there. One is triangular pattern, rotated triangular pattern and square pattern. Next one of the common and very important questions. Floating head exchanger gaskets. Floating head exchangers always have five types of gasket. So in this video you will know five gaskets name and where it is placed. First gasket is channel head to channel cover. Second gasket tube sheet to channel head. Third gasket tube sheet to shell flank. Fourth gasket floating head gasket. And fifth gasket shell pack cover gasket. Next one more small video about the gasket pressing area. First gasket tube sheet to shell. You can see it in the video. Second gasket, floating head gasket. It will attach with tube sheet with floating head. This gasket is called floating head gasket. Then you can fix the bolts and tighten. Third gasket, cell pack cover gasket. And fourth gasket, tube sheet to channel head. And one of the last gasket is channel head to channel cover. Next I am going to start about floating head exchanger maintenance activities. Not only floating it exchangers, vessels and everything, we are going to take the maintenance activities. First we have to start the blinding activities. Blinding it means positive isolation. Whenever you are going to start the blinding, you should start from the inlet. So please keep in your mind, when you are going to start the blinding, you should start from the inlet nacelles only. It will reduce your risk and everything. Blinding activities one of the most important and danger activities so you should follow the safety rules and regulation after blinding we have to make sure the exchanger need a flushing burging and whatever we have to confirm that then we can go for the dismantling dismantling also is one of the important whenever you are going to dismantle the exchanger you should mark the each and every parts it will help you when you are going to box up Exchanger dismantling also have some procedure. First you have to drop the channel head cover, then cell pack cover, then floating head, then channel head. Last you can pull out the tube bundle. Once you dismantle, it means you pull out the bundle, you can start the inspection and corruption activity. What is the inspection and corruption activity? Once you remove the all components, you have to do the all welding joints, buffing and DP test. You will know the welding chain cracks or something, you will know from this DP test, then tube bundle hydrojetting. You can clean the internal cleaning of tube bundle, then UT scan on shell. You will know the shell thickness and everything by UT scan. Then eddy current and irish test. It is belongs to the tube bundle's thickness and wall thickness you will know from this irish test and eddy current test. While you are doing that inspection activities, parallelly you can start the preparation for hydro test. For hydro test, we should need a two manifold. 
So you can see that video, you will know how to make that manifold. It means retro test fitting. So we need a two gate walls. In between these two gate walls, we have to fix one PRV and pressure gauge. Pressure gauge, you will know how many pressure we have to increase. And PRV, when you are above the test pressure, the PRV it will be open. So this slide, you will know the two retro test fitting. And there is a two types of pump is there. One is a hand pump. Another one, pneumatic pump. Volume low, you can use that hand pump. And it is a big volume, you should use that pneumatic pump. Once you got a clearance from inspection, after dismantling, all the inspection activities is completed. Then get the clearance from inspection. Then directly we can go for the Celsius hydro test. Whenever you are going to start the box up, you should make sure the gasket area between tube sheet and shell area is very clear. Then fix the tube bundle with gasket. After fixing the tube bundle, we can go for fix the channel head with gasket as per our marking. Once we fix the tube bundle and channel head, then we are go for the back side. It's called floating head area. We need a one test ring. The floating head we cannot fix for self test. So self test particularly we need a test ring. While you are going to fix the test ring, you should use the Teflon gland backing. Please don't use that graphite because graphite it will be chance for leak while you are doing the hydro test. So once testing is fixed back, we can start the cell side pressurizing from the cell side bottom nozzle. Once our test pressure is reached, you can call the inspection for inspection clearance. Once you got a clearance from inspection, next activity, you can start the tube side hydro test. For tube side hydro test, we need to remove the test ring first, then fix the floating head on that area, then channel cover we need to fix. So properly fix that gasket and tighten the bolts. Once your tightening is completed, then we can pressurize the tube side hydro test on bottom nozzle. Please make sure the rear venting is completed or not. Once pressure is cold, where you need to check the leak on the floating head flanged area and channel head cover area. If there is no leak, you can call the inspection for the clearance. Before call the inspection, please make sure that cell side is very dry. Because the tube bundle have any puncture, the inspection will find out on the cell side nozzle area only. If inspection not found any leak or any pressure drops, we can proceed the final hydro test. Final hydro test, we don't want to do anything, just to fix the cell back cover only and pressurize from the cell side. Once pressure hold, we don't want to call the inspection because final test is only for maintenance and operation. So get the clearance from operation, then we can proceed the next activity. Next final activity is deblinding. So before I told you, when you are going to start the blinding, you should start from the inlet. For deblinding, we should start from the outlet only. It will reduce your risk and everything. After deblinding, we can hand out this equipment to operation. If this exchanger feed is a hydrocarbon or hydrogen, operation first they will do the nitrogen purging. After nitrogen purging, operation will proceed the feed to the exchanger. So finally, make sure with the operation, equipment is running normal or no. If it is normal, our maintenance activity is completed. Next, one of the most important question is, why the floating head exchanger placed in refinery in many locations? There is only one reason floating head exchanger is mostly used in the refinery. The answer is, each and every exchanger, like a flow, have only two flow only it's available. One is a laminar flow, another is a turbulent flow. What is mean by laminar flow and turbulent flow? You can see this video, cell side is a laminar flow and tube side is a turbulent flow. How you know that? That cell side pressure will enter on the one direction and it will out on the same direction only. But tube side it will enter the laminar flow. When it is reached on the floating head area, it will convert it to the turbulent flow. So please keep in your mind, turbulent flow will give more heat transfer than laminar flow. Please comment about my English. Next video onward, I will try to upload one video in three languages. Thanks for watching. Let's join with us and stay with Mechanical Diary.